We're here at the South Carolina Book Festival talking with former Senator Ernest Fritz Hollings about his book, Making Government Work. Uh, Senator, uh, do you think government is working? And if it isn't working, uh, what do you think is wrong with it? Well, it's broken down into partisan re-election teams. Uh, the Congress is more interested in uh, re-election than they are in the needs of the country. And uh, I know it because I've been up there for 38 years and money has gotten to be worse and worse. In other words, my last campaign, uh, I, I was elected uh, for the seventh time to the United States Senate in 1998, 10 years ago. And uh, come on, uh, I had to raise eight and a half million, which is $30,000 a week, each week, every week, for six years. Uh, that's all we do is raise money. Now, with uh, President Obama as a candidate, uh, he raised 278 million more than John McCain. And it's, it's more and more money. If you were gonna run for the Senate, uh, my friend Lindsey Graham, he raised 13 million. Uh, so you spend all your time, you start out uh, four and five years ahead of time, starting to raise money, uh, and uh, you're not paying attention. You, 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 you've got to see the contributors. You, you can't see constituents. I mean, it's uh, the best example is right this month. Uh, they took uh, Lincoln's birthday of February the 12th and Washington's birthday of February the 22nd and merged it in about February the 17th, I think it was, and called it President's Day and took 10 days off to go to California and New York to raise money. That's all they did. Uh, in your book, you say that during your first two decades in the Senate, you could see government making a tangible difference in people's lives. Uh, what do you think has changed during the last 19 years that you were in the Senate? Well, uh, well the last 19 years, the national parties have taken over. And uh, you can't raise the money unless you get the party's help. And uh, thank heavens uh, for the party's help. And they really allowed me to go ahead uh, my own way on many uh, an occasion. But uh, the discipline, uh, for example, in the House and Senate now is uh, you got to go along with the party. The party's not going to help you. And so that makes for a confrontational government. It's difficult. Uh, to get uh, three Republicans, for example, to help on the stimulus. How do you propose taking money out of out of the equation? Oh, just let Congress decide. Uh, under the Buckley versus Vallejo decision, five to four, uh, they said that the person who contributes the money could be controlled, but the person who had the money could buy it, the office. There's no controls. And James Madison, when he passed the First Amendment of freedom of speech, didn't want speech to be measured by money, but that's what the court found. So uh, the most expensive speech in politics is television. Uh, you go to the TV station and say, give me my free speech, I'll kick you out. Uh, so what you've got to do is have a one-line amendment to the Constitution that the Congress is hereby empowered to regulate or control spending in federal elections. Now, we've had five votes on it, and I've gotten a majority vote, but not the 67 or two-thirds on the joint resolution, but the governors have asked that the states be allowed to regulate or control spending in state elections, because it's gotten to be, that's all. If you wanted to run and you came to me and said, from my experience of 52 years, what did you need to do? I said, you got to get one heck of a lot of money before the difference with your position on the budget or on the Iraq war or whatever else. So don't, don't worry about issues, get money. With, with that being said, do you think the right kind of people are still being drawn into Oh yeah, the public they're a lot service? smarter. You've got a good House, you've got a good Senate, uh, and, and they're very, very capable, particularly uh, when I got up there in 66, there was M Margaret Chase Smith from Maine. She was the only woman. Now the women have taken over, both in the House and the Senate, and they are outstanding. I mean, they really study the issues and they know what they're talking about. Uh, do you see the Obama administration taking necessary steps to to take money out of the equation? No, no. There, there's a movement afoot now on public financing, but uh, you've got to be able to fund all the candidates or meet the competition. And like uh, John Corazon, who was a senator from New Jersey, spent 63 million of his own money. 
if uh, he was going to run again, I I'd move up to New Jersey to get my, I'd spend three million on the campaign and come back with the 60 million and retire. <laughs> There's no way to equalize it. And what you're trying to do is limit the 527 groups and everything else like that. So you've got to have the authority to not only regulate the candidates, but the committees and the uh, different interests. Have you found that your viewpoints and perspectives, whether it be on issues or government itself, changed from your earlier years in office towards the, uh, the later end? No, I wish it had changed. Uh, I've been trying to get trade bills passed. In globalization, you can, uh, everybody can produce everything everywhere. And, and so they're going for the cheapest production. And uh, you more or less got a policy of forcing corporate America to offshore. Uh, and other, if your competition goes, you continue to work your own people, you go broke because we got a high standard of living. Uh, you know, the minimum wage, Social Security, Medicare, plant closing notice, parental leave, safe working place, safe machinery, clean air, clean water. You go to China, none of that. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, I mean, you got a tremendous advantage to offshore. And, and we got to equalize or protect our standard of living, protect our economy. The investment, the research, the production, the development, the economy is being offshored and they're talking about stimulating it. What's wrong with it? It's you be getting rid of the jobs. You got an affirmative action policy in Washington to get rid of, of corporate America. Well, thank you so much. We're been talking with Senator Ernest Fritz Hollings at the South Carolina Book Festival about his book, Making Government Work. Thank you very much.